everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be reviewing basically everything K-pop that happened this year. I wanted to end 2019 with some kind of a wrap-up video so there you go. Disclaimer, these are just my opinions, feel free to disagree and share your thoughts in the comment section below. Okay, now it's enough for the intro, let's get into the video. So let's start with the rookies. I think this year we had an amazing lineup of rookies. We had Everglow, Cherry Bullet, AB6, TXT and many more. I think they really killed it this year. The debut songs were so nice and the performances were amazing. ATs are basically one of the best performers in K-pop right now and I am so happy to see that many rookies are getting the recognition they deserve. ITZY for example did so well in 2019 in terms of digital sales and YouTube views. Groups like Everglow also got to shine this year and I live for this. Even though I don't think rookies this year are the most original I cannot deny the fact that they are so hardworking and deserve all the love. My personal favorite is DXT. I think in terms of music, performances and concept they really were outstanding this year and they definitely deserve the title of Rookie of the Year. <laughs> Now for the girl groups, I think it was a super interesting year. As a girl group stan, I have a lot to say about them. A lot of nice things but also I also have a few problems. Let's start with the good things. Girl groups this year really gave us amazing visuals and aesthetics. I think they really killed it in terms of outfits, hairstyles and overall visuals. Girl groups music videos this year were also good honestly. I cannot think of a single girl group MV that was not super satisfying to watch this year honestly. They really killed IT. Now the problem I have with girl groups this year is the lack of originality. I might be the only one who think like that but I really feel like many girl groups played it safe in 2019. The songs were most of the time so good but honestly I was surprised when I ranked my favorite songs of 2019 and realized that not many girl groups made it into the list. Usually my year-end ranking and most listened to songs are always girl groups but this year I really liked just a few songs the rest were kinda too simple. I Loki roasted Red Velvet in my video about big three girl groups and now that Psycho is out I really regret it. I think 3V Festival Seri is one of the best work of art in 2019. SM really had a vision that I couldn't see and now that I see it I really applaud them. I wanted to talk about TWICE also because they truly are my girls and I really like the content they released this year but in my opinion they did not surpass their best ears like Signal, Likey or What Is Love. I am happy to see that they are growing as artists and I feel like this year was like a transition to what's coming next. I personally feel like they will reach a new peak in 2020. Anyway. Girl groups really gave us a whole lot of content this year. Groups like Cosmic Girls, Red Velvet, Cherry Bullet, Fromas 9 and Luna gave us very refreshing content and I definitely appreciate that. On the other hand, I was pretty shocked by boy groups this year. I feel like many groups stepped outside of their comfort zone and tried new concepts and very interesting type of songs. GOT7 is one of the group that really shined in 2019 in my opinion. We also had very fun songs like Boy with Liuv or Crown. I feel like boy groups were not scared to experiment this year. Groups like Stray Kids Golden Child or SF9 really released very interesting songs this year. 
A lot of K-pop stands complain that boy groups were all doing dark concept or whatever but I am personally a music person and when you take the time to listen to the songs you can see the very original sound of each group. The problem with boy groups though was that the songs were sometimes a little too original and were kinda lacking the catchy element that we all like. Anyway, the performances were still lit and all them boys were looking so good all the time so I am not complaining. One group that really shined also in my opinion is Astro. Both All Night and Blue Flame are so good and I think this concept really suits them. I am super excited to see what they will try next. Now for the soloist, I don't have much to say. They all slayed in my opinion. I feel like solo artist got more hype than idol groups this year in Korea but I don't really know since I don't leave their lol. I feel like their music is often very general public friendly and that's a big plus. Anyway, singers like Chunga, Sunmi and Hyuna only dropped bops. I am not the biggest fan of slow songs so some male soloist release were not really my type but Min and Ken really delivered and I enjoyed it. Also I feel like a lot of solo debut happened. A Pink Ha Young or Mama Muhwasa and Dawn too. I also really enjoyed OSTs this year and Teeon and IU songs were also pretty outstanding in my opinion. <laughs> So a lot of other things happened this year that I want to talk about. I couldn't really place them in the other categories so here I am. I will start with all the controversies that happened in 2019. I will start with the sad phenomenon of idols leaving their groups. Honestly when I heard the news about Hanbin I couldn't believe it. And now looking back, it really was just the beginning. For real, Wano leaving Monsta X really broke my heart. Seeing groups we've been loving for years go through hard times like that is so sad and I really am here to support all the fandoms that had to go through this. Cherry Bullet stands, Stay, Munby, Iconic and many more. I personally had one of my worst moment in K-pop this year too. Of course. I am talking about Briston disbandment. It was hella heartbreaking but my girls also finally got the chance to get a new beginning. Kyla on YouTube, 2345 in Hanapia and Ning signing with a new company. Anyway these are not the only sad news of 2019. A lot of idols went on hiatus because of mental and physical health reasons. I am glad idols are getting more open about their sufferings but it also really hurts to see how so many idols are really struggling with anxiety and other disease. I hope companies will take better care of all the idols so we don't have to witness any more tragedy in 2019. Another thing I wanted to talk about is the whole produce Sari drama. I knew this would happen sooner or later. I was so sad when Jong Eun and Samuel didn't make it in season 2 but I didn't want to give up on it just yet. I then enjoyed Produce 48 so much like the previous seasons but you guys no shade to Aizen but the lineup did not make any sense. That's why I decided not to watch Produce Sex. I am very happy the truth finally came out because that whole mess was so unfair to the trainees that were wrong because of corrupt adults. But I also really feel bad for Izum and X1 because they basically did not do anything to deserve disbandment. I really hope they don't disband before the time that was planned because they are already so famous and deserve to perform like each trainees on these shows. I just hope all the directors that created this mess go to jail. Talking about jail, let me quickly mention the Sungrai scandal because this mess happened this year too. I was never a big YG stan but I was so shocked when all of this came out like I couldn't believe it at first but then we got more and more receipts so yeah a very disappointing. 
This was a big reminder that we don't know our idols and the type of person they really are. We shouldn't think they are all perfect and amazing because we never know guys we never know. Anyway, let me change the subject right now with something more bright. Shall we talk about Stan Twitter? Are you guys on Stan Twitter because I am and I fucking loved K-pop stands this year. I don't think I've seen many fan war. Of course immature stands still exist but I feel like most of us learn to accept opinions and ignore trolls. Also I want to applaud us K-pop stands for the world dominations of all our fankums. I truly love seeing fankums everywhere and I got served this year so thanks y'all. Last but not least, I wanted to talk about overseas promotions. Should we start with Super M? Jopping was a bop but the whole concept of Avengers of K-pop was so crinny and it shows SM desperation to break into the US they could have easily make it if they promoted EXO but hey who am I to talk about that. Super M is a great representation of the vibe in K-pop this year. Western validation was even more a thing in 2019 than last year. I even think that BTS might have made more collaborations than OT7 songs this year Mel. I am not complaining because the music was good but it's definitely something I noticed in 2019. Now for Japanese releases, TWICE and Seventeen really delivered. Also IZONE and Red Velvet promoted well there. I feel like idols worked really hard to promote themselves this year and I am glad they managed to meet many fans but the sad part is that it obviously affected their health. Ok I think I am done now, I don't want this video to be too long so yep. Thank you so much for watching, please comment your thoughts below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Bye.